I know. It's pretty surreal for me, too. But I'm here. I'm alive. And I get to do some of the things that I've always wanted to do. Now I just have a bigger reason for doing it. I love spending time with my kids. They're the best. Big boy Shia. Hi. My daughter Gita. Hi. And our newest addition, Soli. I love my wife and I love my family. And it's so hard to leave them. But I, I gotta go and do this because I got to stay a little longer. You see, I'm a singer-songwriter, and I'm also a cancer survivor. Well, I wasn't prepared for that one, that's for sure. I mean, a good nervous breakdown would have been just, just fine for me. Yeah, but I, I couldn't get away that easy. Cancer really gave me a whole new perspective on life. You see, after recovery, I wrote a collection of songs that chronicled what happened to me. And now I'm going to bring these songs to people all over the world. And that's my way of giving back. I'm Charlie. <laughs> Nice to meet you. From Japan? What yeah. part of Japan? North of Japan. North of? Oh, wow. Where are you going today? Today, I'm just here. So my friends live here for Tennessee. Uh-huh. I'm just driving. Great. Yes. Well, we're, we are on our way to sing songs for people who are going through cancer to make them feel better. I know what they feel because I am a cancer survivor. Please careful. Take care. Thank you. What's the word in Japan for gan. cancer? Gan. 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 Can you imagine? That's a, that's appropriate. Gun. It sounds like gun. Gun. Yeah. We are on a mission to help people through songs, music. This is my love guitar. See? Love guitar. Yeah, thank you. There you go. I'm first one. For you, thank yes. You very much. Thank you. Bring I'm it to so Japan. Good. All right. And and you can copy it and give it to people who need okay. to feel better. Okay. okay? You're, very You're very welcome. It's nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. This is my new co host here. Take care. We'll see you next time. <laughs> Thank you. Well, come on in, sit down, she said. Have you ever seen this bed? Well, no, it's really strange. It looks like a space age dream. But well, don't be scared, it won't take long We can play our favorite songs Just relax and close your eyes It sounded like a machine gun And it wasn't even close to fun Had my arms above my head like they arrested me And now it's time to take some more Doctors need more to explore Come this way inside my room Ooh, And they shot me You know, I saw things one way, and maybe I had my blinders on, and I kind of explained it, that cancer kind of did that. You put your blinders on, and you couldn't, you couldn't have the peripheral vision. You kind of lost that. Um, and so I would see things when we were at the hospital, and we would be talking during the family counseling sessions, and the kids would say, well, this and this happened. I'm like, really? When did this happen? You know, I, I didn't see that, but we each had our own little journey that we went on through that process and family counseling really helped us share that journey with one another so that it became all of our journeys. You know what's amazing is that everywhere we go on, already on this journey, people are sharing with us their cancer story. I mean, it's, 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 it's affecting everybody. A brother, a mother, a father, a sister, a best friend or even a celebrity that you love. And what's, what's wonderful is people are opening up to me. They're sharing with me.
I left my wife and kids to do this for four days, and it's not easy on my wife to take over the entire, you know, clan, man. But um, she knows, she understands what I'm doing. She's right there. She was there through cancer. So she's there through helping other people with cancer. So I love you, babe. I'm only able to chew on one side of my mouth. Well, the prosthetic that they gave me, the replacement, it hinges onto the only teeth I have left on the upper jaw. And it doesn't hinge onto anything on this side, so I can't chew on this side. So I can only really chew and taste things on one side of my mouth. And you know what? It's fine by me. <laughs> At least I get to eat. At the Fred Hutchinson Cancer Research Center in Seattle, their mission statement is to eradicate cancer and all life-threatening diseases from the planet. My uncle was cut down in the prime of his life. He'd just gone taken the Cincinnati Reds to the World Series, and um, it was devastating to all of us to see this beautiful big man lose his fight with cancer. And I think of it today, and it's still tough. We were the first center in the country to perform the bone marrow transplants. And Don then went on to get the Nobel Prize. And the center became quite famous and shared all of their therapies and all their information with every other hospital and cancer center throughout the country. We have fun here. I, I get we're that. We're very serious, but a lot of fun. Which is... The way life should be. That's it. It's too yeah, short and yeah, it's too yeah, quick and, yeah. you know, one day you're in control of it. Yeah. So why not have a good time while why we're not here? have a good time while we're here? So where are we? We're at Hutch School. Hutch this School. Is, this is Hutch School. What is Hutch School? Hutch School is a school that was started by Fred Hutchinson Cancer Research Center uh, for pediatric cancer patients uh, about 28 years ago okay. when bone marrow transplants were really experimental and they needed a teacher to teach the pediatric patients. Got it. That teacher, Betsy Presley, was uh -huh. an amazing woman who, sh who noticed that there were a lot of kids running around in the hallways of the hospital. Mm -hmm. And she realized that the siblings of the patients needed a school also. Okay. So she went down to Olympia and lobbied for a school and Hutch School began. Wow. Is there a special sensitivity? Obviously, I would think that mm -hmm. They're getting here. School. Like it says on the wall, here we treat others kindly and with respect. Everyone's going through the same hard time, and <sighs> the kids act as a support system for each other. Got it. Wow. And it works. It works really well. Wonderful. Right before my surgery, my doctor told me I may never sing again. And Well, I, I'm singing better than I ever have before. I'm just afraid that maybe my replacement jaw might fly out and hit somebody in the front row during a performance. I'd love you all to sing along. And it's, so here are the lyrics. It goes, oh, let's make the best of it now. Ready? Oh, oh let's make the best of it now. OK, you're pretty good. That's pretty good. OK, you'll know where it comes in. Ready? Did you know the sun could shine one day and everything on earth could melt away? All the oceans rise above the land. We'll take in every woman, every man. Here it comes. Oh, let's make the best of it now. Should we try a cappella? Ready? Oh, oh, let's.
let's make the best of it now, yeah. Thank you. Thank you again for what you do for people like me. If I may be personal for a moment about your your connection to this right. cancer thing. Right, yeah. Who, who's going through that? Well, my in dad's been right my dad's been dealing with uh, a form of colon cancer for a couple of years now. I mean, I know this is one of those things that people face in life and I just looked at it, you know, just with a good a vision for the outcome as possible. And so, you know, we'll, I'll be there to support him and he'll keep fighting. You know, hopefully there's more of a, a desensitization, if that's a word, that towards the, the topic of cancer in this culture right now, because there's so many people that seem to have the illness that hopefully as a society we can sort of, you know, talk more about it and express ourselves in a way and hopefully, you know, make these people feel more comfortable to help them overcome what they're dealing with. What would you say your mission statement is on the planet Earth, my friend? <sighs> my mission statement on the planet Earth is to provide people with a, a seed of optimism and intention in what they do. Hopefully by having an optimistic vision and intention in your daily activities, your life will unfold in a way that hopefully will be better for yourself and for the environment and other beings. So, yeah, I appreciate what you're I'm doing. Right in on that. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Right on, man. Good, we're here to play rock and roll. I always remember what my first artistic director for the show that I did in Santa Monica told me every time I'm getting ready to go out there. He said, why? Ask yourself why you do what you do. Then go out there and do that. And they shot me, made me nuclear. And they told me it would make me go, whoa. They proudly radiated me because they want to see right through my bones. I had an osteosarcoma of the upper maxillary, which is bone cancer in my upper jaw. When you got something as rare as that, well, who's, who's going to treat that? If only a few people. So am I going to fly to Germany? Because I know they've got like, a lot of things going on. Am I going to go to Australia? Wherever i got to go. Turns out it's in my backyard. It's in Los Angeles. The, the freaky thing was that when I call the office, they're like, hello, Dr. Forger's office. I'm like, hi, I, I need to see Dr. Forger. Well, he's at a funeral. <laughs> the doctor, I gotta find the doctor. Where are we going? We're driving around with our heads cut off. Where am I to go? Now that I know I'm in trouble. Well, do you have a name? Someone on the Bible. Someone you can trust with years of admiration. Well, there's not too many hands can do this operation. Tell me who. I wanna know who is highly regarded. I just don't know what I'm going to do. They tell me things I can't believe it's true. That if I want a better chance to live, I've got to follow the advice they give. Because they say the situation can be dire. This may have spread just like a forest fire. So 20 rounds of chemotherapy, that is the answer that they have for me. Is it the only way, uh, the only way to stop those cells inside that threaten me so I can be there for my family? Oh man, it's so surreal to me, surreal to me, the life we got. One day you are in control, then suddenly you're not. I think it's always inspirational and interesting to hear someone's personal story. And to have it performed in such a way is very unique. I've never seen anything like it. I've had a, uh, relatives that have passed away with cancer, and so he, I wanted to find out more about it. And he gave a real good presentation. I really enjoyed the program. He says he wants people to feel liberated, and I do. I mean, I feel like tomorrow I'm ready to uh, to attack the world again, and it, with with all the different issues and challenges that I have, from a very positive perspective. And it's just going to make me. It, it made me feel good. 
well, I'm just checking the emails this morning, and we get this letter from Uday Megumi. Uday Megumi writes, Hi, Charlie. How was your flight? I'm Megumi from Japan. We met at the LA airport. Do you remember me? I'm the first person that you gave a CD to. I think you have a special job. I'm sure you encourage a lot of people who have cancer in the world. You also heal people. Please take care of your health, for someone is waiting for your visit. I'll be waiting for you in Japan, too. Megumi. Yeah, well, there you go. I guess we're going to Japan. There's just, we've been invited, officially invited now. Do what you love. Love what you love. Hard to the big red button. Love all you can. I went on this five-day seminar in Santa Barbara where it was all about positive mental attitude, transforming your mind into a fully positive state. And most of the people who came to this were people going through cancer. I came out of that five days with this incredible amount of positive energy. And so I went back to my support group and um, they kicked me out because I was way too positive. Appreciate it. I've written these songs that tells the story from the phone call through everything that happened to me physically and emotionally, getting scanned, trying to find your doctor, uh, the fear of dying. A dad who thought he was dying of cancer is now singing about his survival. Come before us, Elisa Jaffe shows us the musician who lost his jaw and found his voice. Charlie Lustman's brain spun out of control when a doctor interrupted his recording session to say he had a rare bone cancer in his jaw. It felt like someone shot me. Just like, Phew. It's like this whole flash of every, your whole life, the people you love, everything you've ever done, what your future dreams are, all like flash. His initial thought, why me, quickly flipped. Why not me? Who should get this call? My wife? my pregnant wife, my son, my dad or mom. Surgeons sawed off Lussman's upper jaw, replacing it with a prosthetic, giving him a voice. And I swear it was so bizarre when I opened up my eyes, I couldn't say anything to anyone, cause my jaw was closed from what they'd done. He's now singing to patients at Fred Hutchinson Cancer Research Center, taking his songs to scores of cancer centers around the country. To get the message out that you can overcome a difficult life obstacle, whatever that is. Lussman says he feels healthier than ever before and plans to spread the word around the world that if he can kick cancer, anyone can rise above rough spells. Oh, let's make the best of it now. In Seattle, Elisa Jaffe, Como More News. We are going to now be playing for the faculty and the staff at the Fred Hutchinson Cancer Research Center because we need to acknowledge them and the work they do to save people's lives like mine. And then I can go out and help other people. You know, it's this is full circle thing. So we're going to go and jam a little bit. We got the concert tonight as well. We had a great time with Elisa Jaffe. She's wonderful. She she's got a can she had a cancer story as well. You know, it just seems like everybody's touched by this thing. Why am I so afraid to die? Well, I don't have an easy answer to. Something everyone will have to do. Me and you. And why am I so afraid to go? Well, I don't know where I am going to. And when I think about it, I get so scared about it. Because I fear what I don't know.
doctor, oh, will scan me quarterly until they show that I am cancer free. Back to the hospital and wait in line so he can nuke my body one more time. <laughs> but I can't complain of what they've done to me. No, no, cause I'm still around. I've got some extra time to be. Oh, somebody new, brand new. Somebody new. And these simple songs are all I know. How would I have to give this world today? And I hope it's so. I hope it's okay. Yes, I hope. Well, that's okay. I came really open, not oh, really yeah. expecting, not knowing really what Poorly. to expect. Um, I came to find out, and I guess because we all, it's all about ourselves, you know, oh, yeah. the things that we go through, I came because I have so much stress in my own life, and I just wanted to hear someone who seemed to be very positive and inspirational from what I'd heard, and I, it's hard to believe that people can be what the press, you know, or what, you know what I mean, people are prompted, prompted up to be more than you get, and I kind of like, wow, <laughs> he's so much more than I expected, he went really real, genuine, authentic, and I just moved me greatly, because... Thank you, I'll see you tonight, yes, great show. <laughs> just, we can all flip it around, and I just, that's what I'll take from me, from this, is that we can change the way we look at things, and step outside ourselves, and just, if he can get through that, gosh. is a little tired. I mean, I've sung songs all week, kind of back to back, day after day. Did a lot of talking this week, a lot of interviews, a lot of sharing, and uh, all I can say is that I'm like, uh, I'm tired. <laughs> But I feel good, and I'm gonna keep on doing this until the day I leave the planet. Life is great. Somebody new.